After Effects is a program so big and complex that it feels like you can do almost anything, which is great, but it also makes it hard sometimes to hone in on the things that'll actually help you improve. So today, I'm gonna share with you my 30 favorite keyboard shortcuts that'll help you to work faster, more efficiently, and maybe even just blow your mind with some of the things you didn't know were possible. I'm gonna be trying to make sure that all of these shortcuts are helpful to your basic workflow, and we're gonna be starting off with some more simple shortcuts and then move on to some more advanced ones later on. And just to clarify, we're gonna be displaying all the shortcuts for both Mac and PC, but I'm working on a PC, so anytime I use Control or Alt, substitute it for Command or Option on your Mac. But with that out of the way, if you're excited, hit the like button and let's start the list. When you create something new like a shape or a piece of text, you may notice that the center point of the object isn't directly in the center, making scaling up shapes or text look like this instead of this. So how do you fix it? Hold Control or Command and go up to this icon here and double click it. Now your anchor point for that object will be in the center. And you can also do this with an entire layer itself with the keyboard shortcut Control Home if you're on a full-sized keyboard. And if you don't have a full-sized keyboard, you can customize this manually when we get to keyboard shortcut number 30. Once you have some things down in your composition, you might want to make changes like position, scale, or rotation. Instead of dropping down each of these layer menus and adjusting, you can simply hit the P key for position, the S key for scale, the R key for rotation, and the T key for opacity to bring up only that one parameter. And if you do this with multiple layers selected, you can bring this up for each layer and make all of those changes together at the same time, as long as they're all highlighted. And by holding Alt and Shift and hitting one of those parameter buttons, you can make a keyframe for all of those selected layers. Now, if you're like me, you create a lot of solid layers in every project. So instead of going through menus, just hit Control or Command Y. And by hitting Control Alt Y, you create a new adjustment layer. A seemingly small detail, but if you use it a lot, it adds up over time. If you wanted to move your playhead forward one frame at a time, you can hit page up or page down, but if you don't have a full-sized keyboard, you can also hold Control or Command and hit your left or right arrows to get the same result. And by holding Control Shift and clicking left or right, you can move forward or backward 10 frames at a time. And you can use the same idea if you wanted to move keyframes instead of your playhead. Just highlight the keyframe or keyframes you want to move, hold Alt or Option, and arrow left or right. And just like moving your playhead, you can also hold shift to move those keyframes forward or backward 10 frames at a time. But sometimes getting to those keyframes through all of your layer options can be kind of time consuming and frustrating. So instead you can show all of your keyframes present by just hitting the U key. And all of the layer options which have keyframes will show up. Press it again to collapse it all back down. And if you wanted to expand just literally everything, just hit the U key twice. Let's stick with keyframes for a little longer and say that you spent a lot of time building out an animation with a lot of keyframes, but you realize that it's either too fast or too slow. Instead of moving each individual keyframe, you can just highlight all of them that you want to adjust, hold Alt or Option, and just click and drag to stretch out your entire set of keyframes proportionally. This one can save you so much time. Now let's take it even further. Let's say that you wanted to reverse the order of your keyframes. Instead of taking these two and dragging them back and forth, you can actually just highlight them and hit Alt or Option R. And giving those keyframes some smooth animation is super easy. By selecting a keyframe or multiple keyframes and pressing F9 or Function 9 on a Mac. And it will give those keyframes an easy ease. You can also hold Control or Command and click on any of those keyframes to make them linear again. Now, if you're doing a lot of animation, you're going to want to make multiple changes at the exact same spot where you made previous keyframes. So you end up hopping between keyframes a lot. You can make that process a lot easier by hitting K to jump forwards to the next keyframe. Or by hitting J, you'll move backwards to the closest one behind the playhead. We're about halfway through, so if you're getting anything out of this so far, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon so that you never miss when we post content like this again. Now, back to the shortcuts. Once you have an animation set up, you're probably going to want to view it by itself to see that it looks right, and usually without having to view your entire composition. So what you can do is just highlight a layer, and by hitting Control alt b you'll set your work area to the exact length of that layer. This is helpful because now when you want to preview your work, it'll loop only within this section, helping you to save time by not rendering any of this extra work. And for even more helpful playback tips, by hitting Shift-0 on a PC or Command-0 on a Mac, you can preview your entire composition but skip rendering every other frame. To give you a general idea of what your composition looks like, but cutting out half of the rendering your computer has to do. Just a heads up though, the zero for that shortcut has to be on the number pad. 
So now that you've selected a smaller section of your timeline, getting closer to view just that portion is easy by hitting the plus button to zoom in and the minus button to zoom out to get a broader view of your timeline. Now, let's say you created something great, but you wanted to swap out an element, say for example, a logo with a different color scheme, but you did all of that work and you don't wanna to have to reanimate everything. You can actually replace elements without adjusting anything. Just select the layer you want to replace, then hold Alt or Option and click and drag the new element into the composition timeline or the composition window. Or alternatively, you can select the layer that you want to replace, select the item that you want to replace and hit Control, Alt, Backslash. Now, once you have a nice composition assembled, you may want to pre-compose it so that you can work with all of that baked into a larger composition. You can right click and select pre-compose, but you can also just highlight the layers you want to include and hit Control, Shift, C easily converting all that work into a single layer. By now you've got loads of layers, potentially in multiple compositions, and you may end up finding that working with all of those is tough within this small area here. Well, a quick solution is just to hover your mouse over the composition layers and press the tilde key. If you don't know which one that is, it's right here on both a Mac and PC, right below the escape button. Pressing this makes the panel go full screen. Now you've got a lot more area to work with your keyframes and layers, and if you wanted to go back to normal, just press the tilde key again. And this actually works for absolutely any panel. Now, one thing that might get frustrating is if you're doing something tedious like rotoscoping and you need to zoom in and out a lot of your image here, don't use the percentage values. You can just zoom in and out using the scroll wheel of your mouse or two fingers on your trackpad. But if you're having trouble zooming into a specific area precisely, just hold space and click and drag around your image with the hand tool. This combination of scroll zooming and using the hand tool is so much faster. And the great thing about using spacebar for the hand tool is that it reverts back as soon as you let go. And if you're using something like the pen tool to create a complicated mask, it won't interrupt that process. Now that you're all done with that, if you're OCD like me, you wanna bring things back to a perfectly centered full screen. So instead of selecting the fit view, just hold shift forward slash. And now your view goes back to filling the window precisely. But during this process, if you notice, for some reason you're not able to actually see your mask outline, you've probably accidentally turned off layer controls. Easily turn them back on by hitting Control, Shift, H. This can also help you to temporarily get rid of distracting boundary boxes if you want just a nice clean image. Now before rendering and exporting everything, if you just wanted to save a single frame of your project, maybe for a thumbnail or maybe to show your client what one frame looks like, you can hit Control Alt S to send the frame that your playhead is currently on over to the render queue. And from here you can select a JPEG export option and click render to get your final still frame. And of course, the final keyboard shortcut is Control Alt comma to bring up your custom keyboard shortcut window. This will give you full access to view and edit every single keyboard keyboard shortcut possible inside of After Effects. And guys, those have been my 30 favorite keyboard shortcuts to help you work faster and more efficiently inside of After Effects. I really hope that you guys found the video helpful. And if you're looking for other ways to get your work done faster with great looking results, we've got tons of awesome looking After Effects templates over at motionarray.com and some of them are actually free. I'll make sure to link to all of those in the description below. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and I can't wait to see you in the next video.